Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Charlie Haynes with Jacobs Well Ministries, located up in Pearl River County, Mississippi. Before we started our teaching this morning, I want to just spend a minute with you talking about the worship that we do here. I want you to understand that the worship that you watch uh, on television each Sunday morning or listen to on radio comes from our recovery center, Jacobs Well Recovery Center for Women, which is a six-month Christ-centered addiction recovery program for women, where young women come and live with us in residency for six months that they might be taught sound biblical principles of living. One of the things that we do is we worship often and we worship together on Sunday morning, not only with the girls but with their families and the significant people in their lives. And God placed it on our hearts some time ago that we should begin to share those teachings with people other than the ones that are in our program. Therefore, we broadcast them on television, we broadcast them on your local radio station, and we appreciate you tuning in and listening to those teachings. We pray that they're touching you and that they're moving in your heart. We'd love to hear from you about how these teachings are affecting you. If they moved you in some way or moved somebody in your family, I'd love for you to just drop me a note in the mail and tell me about it. Give me your testimony about that. You can reach me at Charlie Haynes, 45 Buford Lane, Poplarville, Mississippi, 39470. Also, just feel free to pick up the phone and call me. My cell phone number is 601-463-0022. Appreciation. It's Pastor Appreciation Month, but today is celebrated as Pastor Appreciation. So I'm going to ask not only our pastor to come up here, but the pastor's wife to come up here as well. Make your way on up here. I want to read to you. Uh, I want to read to you what the Lord had me read, and then tell you something after I uh, read this. And it says, and "This is y'all's calling. This is uh, Jacob's well, and Righteous Oaks was birthed from the the crisis in the Haynes family. That's what it was birthed from. And so this was the this was the command that was given." to mom and dad from the Lord. And it comes straight out of Isaiah, Isaiah 61. And it says this, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, to release from darkness, the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of uh, of our God to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion or to, and to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of their ashes, the oil of gladness instead of their mourning, a garment of praise instead of spirit of despair. They will be called righteous of uh, right oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for his display and splendor. And the Lord told me to go a little step further, which is uh, six, seven. And it says, instead of their shame, my people will, will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land and everlasting joy will be theirs. So, you know, that's good. God said that and I was blessed. But then this little sheet of paper was just stuck in that Bible. And I was like, what's this little people stick of paper sticking in my Bible for? I don't know what's there. And then it said Revelations 5. 11 or 12 and this is what the lord is declaring for you two individual this ministry all the people who are in it y'all ready y'all ready then i looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousands they encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders, and in a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive the power and the wealth and the wisdom and the strength and the favor and honor and glory and be praised to the Lord. And so I believe right now that's what we're walking into. 
And I'm telling y'all, we need to get ready. I believe the staff of Jacob's Well is ready to serve in whatever capacity that you have. First, we want to say we're grateful for you too. We're grateful for your hearts. We're grateful for your love. We're grateful for you being a father to the fatherless and a mother to the motherless. But we're here to serve. And so wherever you lead, wherever the Lord tells you to lead, that's where we're going. Can I get an amen from the staff? And so right now, I want you all to just point your hands up here. Just going to point our hands, and as we pray, we're going to all be in agreement upon them right now. Father God, we come to you right now lifting up these two, two beautiful people, God. Lord, you put a calling on their life. You took them from just the ashes, from the destruction of what Satan tried to steal, kill, and destroy for them, and you placed a phenomenal calling to not just save a family, God, not just save me and Asa and Tammy and Virginia and our kids, but to save hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of men and women in this world, God. So right now, God, I pray for the heavens to open. I pray right now for your healing rain as each woman walks in the store and as each man walks in righteous oaks, God, that you will heal their hearts, that they will be delivered because, God, there's a calling on their life to take their crisis and to take what Satan tried to steal from them to go and start their own ministries, God. And so right now, God, today, we pray that they will see the vision of that, Lord. They will just accept the call of that. So, Lord, we thank you. We just give you thanks for them and for their hearts, Lord, and we ask you to continue to pray for their strength, their healing, healing, their health, everything that they need to be equipped with God to do this. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Hallelujah. Josette Thompson, come up here just a minute. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I know you're about to do uh, some awards for some very brave and special women, but I just wanted to share something with this group of people that we've got in here this morning as I look around. You and I have come to a place in life that both of us pray that the whole world will come, and that is that you and I have made up our minds that the world is not going to use our skin color to divide us. Now, I, w I was praying about this. You you're, such a, you're such an awesome testimony to your community. And, and I was praying about this. You know, the only thing that really separates you and I now, if the world wants to separate us, is the pigmentation of our skin. Because we were created by the same God. We were given salvation and healed by the same Savior. We're listening to the same Holy Spirit. We're reading from the same Word. We got way more in common. When you want to stop and think about the blessing, right? And, and I, you know, I say this all the time. These folks that are new here don't know this, but for a long time we lamented here. Because the, the black community had not participated in this ministry and in the recovery center and taken advantage of what we had here. Maybe because of division, maybe because they just didn't know we existed. But, but as these strong black women have come out of the community and come into our program and stood for Christ through this program, like these we're going to meet this morning, it, it's, it's just an amazing thing. And, uh, and I, I just, I challenge all of us. I challenge all of us black and white. Let, do not let this world, do not let the devil keep dividing the Christians of our world by skin color. Don't let them do that. I got my mind made up. You got your mind made up. And I'm going to pray that we're going to start here in Pearl River County. And we're loving on each other, and we're going to love our way all the way out to the end of the earth if we can. Because, listen, the devil, the devil, if we ever figure this out, that we got more in common, that we got different, the devil's going to lose. Because can you imagine the great partnerships between different of, of people of different races that come together to serve Christ together? What an awesome thing that would be. Because, look, when I get up to heaven, I ain't going to look for the white church. I'm not going to look for the black church. It's not up there, okay? We're all going to be together at the throne. Amen? Amen. 
but I love you. You are so special to me personally. You're so special to this ministry. You're special to your community because of what you stand for and what you believe. And I'm so proud to have you in my life and a part of our ministry. Would you honor these young women this morning? All right. Good morning. I just had one question to say, uh, to ask. Brother Charlie, you're white? <laughs> That's my pastor, Brother Charlie. I love him. Uh, come on up here, Santana. Oh, no, Marty. Marty's coming first. Come on, Marty. Um. I just want to honor Marty on this morning because from the time um, Marty has come into our program, she has come in with a, a great spirit of um, wanting to do whatever it was that was asked of her, whether it be lift couches, <laughs> whether it be hang clothes. God elevated you to run in the store. He has done so many great things for you. When the whole world was against you and said that you would not be able to do this, God positioned you. He positioned you. He exposed you to six months of being washed under his glorious word. He didn't do all that and stop there. He's giving you the courage that you're going to need to stand against the attacks of this world because it's not going to be easy, but God didn't say that it would be. He's going to give you the knowledge you need to make the decisions, just like the decisions that you've made to go to the lighthouse, to continue walking this thing out. And I am so, so, so very proud of you. And the word that the Lord gave me for you is the same one we're going through right now, that God's going to grow you. He's going to grow you in wisdom so that you know the right decisions to make. He's going to grow you in stature. He's going to grow you in favor. Things, the doors are going to be opening for you that you're not even going to understand why they're opening. And it's going to be special favor in front of God and in man. And I am so proud of you. And here is your award. Wow. <laughs> I just want to thank God, first of all, because... I am chosen. He chose me to work in his kingdom. And I'm just, who am I? I'm just somebody. But he chose me because he saw inside of me what I didn't see. And I want to, Miss Susan, woo, I love you. I love you so much. Even whenever it was so hard to hear what you had to tell me sometimes. But we don't want to believe the truth. You know, that's, I, I love you and I thank you. Brother Charlie, Miss Pam, y'all started Jacob's Well. It's, it's more bitter than it is sweet to leave because this is where I found God. This is where I found who God created me to be. And I'm not ashamed of my bubbliness no more. <laughs> I am thankful that I can make people laugh. And y'all showed me that. And Asa, Miss Mandy. Asa, we've had a lot of roads and furniture. <laughs> and I just thank you because you were patient with me. And y'all all share y'all's families with us. Whenever I don't have my kids, it seems like every time I get down and out, each one of y'all's kids run up to me and hug me. And Miss Mandy, your spirit, your, your heart, I admire it. And I want, I just want God to transform me to where you're at because you are amazing. Josette, I love you. You are my, you're my sister. <laughs> no matter what, if I come to you, you're open arms and even if, you know, you're like, Marty, that's not right. It, you're still, you can see my point, but you still correct me and to know what, what it should be. Thank you for being a true friend, because I didn't know what that was. My family. Mama, I'm going to the lighthouse. <laughs> God chose me to move forward 
in his kingdom to do what he has called me to do. I may not know fully what it is, but I knew, do know that I am called to bring the joy to people whenever they can't feel it. Cause, and I'm, I'm there to encourage people. I know I have an encouragement as a spiritual gift and service because I love to help people. And I want to just be there and hold you at night and let you know that I love you. But God didn't call me to do that. And I just want you to know that I love you. And I thank you for being here for me because you didn't have to be. You didn't have to answer the phone. You didn't have to send me money. But you did it. And I just love you. Nick and my, my Vietnamese sister-in-law, okay? <laughs> I love you. And I really don't know you, but I love you too. I, I've done some stuff to you, but it's, I'm forgiven. It's under the blood. I'm asking you to forgive me and to see who I am now. Because who I was is not who I am anymore. I refuse to be a victim anymore. I'm victorious. I am not going back. <laughs> I'm not going back to the person that I was. I refuse. Because how I feel here, there ain't nothing. It may not have been what whoever else went through, but it was enough. And I refuse, and I love you with my whole heart. And I just want you to accept me now and not put my past in front of me because it's behind I'm moving forward <laughs> I was sitting up crying and I was like God just I need a verse I need a word from you and I just flipped my Bible open like Pastor Charlie said you know I just prayed and I flipped my Bible open the other morning in quiet time and I got Isaiah 43 1 through 3 but now, this is what the Lord says. Who, he who created you, Jacob, he who f formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Woo! That, I mean, whenever I read that, I just knew that that old life is not, it's not for me. Nothing about that is for me. And I just thank God for letting me see that. And Miss Tammy, I didn't mean to forget you. <laughs> Miss Tammy, I love you, and you are so strong. And for you to be here as long as you've been lets me know that everything that you go through with 30 women... I can do it. I can do whatever. And I just love you too because I, I, I've learned so much from you. And I love you. And I just love all y'all. And for the ladies, y'all can do it because I did it. And there was times where I was like, whoop, time to sneak out. But I didn't. I pushed through because God would not let me. So y'all just push forward because it's, he didn't call you here to leave. And I, I, the lighthouse, I'm going to half step and nothing else. I'm going the whole way. Because God didn't call me to quit. And I love y'all. Just don't leave. I have to tell you, number one, where, where'd that come from? The Lord showed, number one, uh, Isaiah 50, I think it's 58 or 59. Arise and shine for your light has come. The light is shining on you right now. You are, you're actually, lighthouse, listen to me. She's coming to bring y'all a breath. She's coming to bring y'all some oxygen. You hear me? She's coming to bring y'all something that y'all need. When you're in an airplane crash and they say, don't make sure you put the oxygen mask on you and not your children first or both of y'all are going to die, she's, she's dropping the oxygen mask down. That's what she's about to bring to you guys. So get ready for that. You get ready and be obedient in their time. But I just had to say, uh, somebody pecked out this week. Somebody pecked out. Okay, it's my turn again. What? Oh, get your award, Morty. That's for you, girl. Stay here six months to leave without it. <laughs> Come on up here, Santana. <laughs> I 
All right, I'm trying not to cry because Marty got me crunk up, you know. But what God laid on my heart for you this morning is that even though there's nobody here on your behalf, though none go with you, still you will follow. Because when they see you, Santana, they're going to see what I see. They're going to see a person that has been transformed by the renewing of her mind. And I know what it looks like because just this week when Susan came back all hyped up, she jumped me off. You know, I mean, I, I'm jumped off. You know what I'm saying? God has put me in a whole nother position as he has done you because I'm no greater person in his eyes. The word that God has for me to give you this morning is Proverbs 16, chapter third verse. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. See, the world wants you to fail. The people who knew you, they don't want to see a new you. They don't know what you've been through in the six months, but you know. You know what God has done. You know the trials that you've had to walk through. Your testimony has come with a big test. You've been separated from your children. God placed them in your life to help you. I did not raise mine completely. God laid it on my heart to help you because he knows what it is. He didn't want you to give up and quit. See, the devil's plan was for it to be over with. But God's plan is to prosper you and to bring you in a land that you're going to possess because he loves you for who you are, not what the world meant for you to be. And I'm proud of you, and I know that you are going to do great things. I, I'm glad that you're my sister in Christ, that you're my sister, sister, you know. And I'm going to be around in the community. If ever you need me to come by my house, to, to talk, to cry, because trouble is going to get in your way. But you know the Lord, and trouble don't last always. Your trials are going to come to make you a stronger, better person, because the trials are just a step away for you. So don't be discouraged, because we are your family. We are standing here on your behalf, and we love you, and here's your award. Oh, I didn't put on no mascara because I knew I was going to cry. <laughs> I just want to say I thank Miss Susan for just encouraging me, for telling me to do the right thing on purpose. And I just thank Miss Tammy for calling me in the room all that time. <laughs> they got me to get on the right track. And I just want to say to Miss Pam, I love you so much. You have been a great mom to me. The mom I did that. <laughs> I thank you so much. I love you just so much. And Brother Asa, I thank you so much for being up by my side when I wanted to give up on that cash register. <laughs> and you told me that I can do this, and I did it. I did it. And I just want to thank all y'all so much. And to the ladies, y'all can do this. So many times I wanted to give up and go home, but y'all can do this. The ones that got kids, y'all can do this. Just put your kids to the side for a minute. God is not going to let nothing happen to y'all kids. He got y'all kids. He put y'all here for a purpose. And Ms. Jose, I just thank you so much for doing that for me, to get my kids, for I wouldn't give up, so I can stay here and learn about Jesus. And I just thank y'all for everything y'all have done. Hallelujah. You know, uh, there are not very many uh, men who stand in the pulpit who are, able, are blessed enough to say what I'm about to say. But I want to introduce the man that led me to Jesus Christ, my son, Asa. Y'all make him welcome, okay? You know, while we were, before I bring up uh, the uh, Lillian, who I'm going to honor, you know, during worship, um, well, Lillian, go ahead and come on up here. Y'all welcome Lillian. Yeah. Lillian is in the house. So beautiful. I love you, darling. Here, stand right here because we want that camera to get our good sides, right? Um, uh, some, God was just stirring in my spirit, in my heart 
however you want to say he was just all in me and uh he spoke something to me that that i've really never heard before and uh but the the truth is the truth and then i'm going to apply this to what i believe god is speaking into your life and i hope it bubbles over to everyone in this room i deal a lot with commodities uh in my in my in my life and uh as you heard from santana I've helped her and, and every woman in here get established, whether it's on a register or learning how to be a manager or, or being responsible for so many things. So, you know, a lot of times those things come to my head, the things that you deal with, whether, you, whether you're a landscape artist or you're a tax assessor, those things constantly go through your mind, right? Whether you're a sailor or whether you're a, a homemaker, those things that are, surround your mind's eye that you're involved in all the time kind of just swim in your, in your mind's eye. You know what I'm talking about? Is anybody, can anybody understand what I'm saying? So this is where I'm coming from, and, and hang on with me because I'm going to bring you somewhere. God, God spoke in my heart when it when the song came up. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my uh, I'm trading my shame. I'm trading my hurt. I'm trading my pain. There is nothing that this everything that is man made in this world decreases in value immediately. Cars, when it's driven up, when it's cranked up and driven off the lot, it is decreased in value immediately television sets that were $1,900. As soon as you buy them and put them on the wall, before you even get them in your car, they're decreased in value like that. Everything man-made is decreased in value the moment it is purchased because we place the value on it as men. And then he said, let's, let's turn the switch for a second. He said, now look at the things that I've made. Gold, oil, they don't decrease in value. When everything else is plummeting, what do they grab onto? The natural things of this world. And there's no coincidence in that because God says, even the rock shall cry out and, and, and praise him. Because in that is God's glory. His presence is in what he has made. The tangibility of who he is is in what he has made. And a lot of us don't get that because a lot of people who trade those commodities are unsaved or self-centered or self-ambitious people that want to get theirs out of what that is. But God stays constant in that, whether it's gold or whether it's uh, uh, even, I mean, even walk rocks in a quarry that we would count as zero. There are people in this world that would pay hundreds of thousands of dollars just to have them on the side of the wall of their house. I started to think about as, as, as even, as even, uh, you know the 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 algae that grows on the sidewalk bricks, how it's this, how it's uh, kind of makes it old looking, and people say that's old, and we don't want that. People pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for that look, but it's not made of man. Those things are made of the Lord. Trees from trees to, to even water that we drink, the commodity that the Lord has made that should have been a free gift to us, now man has twisted into his own gain. And what we've done as people is we've put the price tag on what the world has said onto us. And we said, the world has made me this. Man has made me this. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? Man has made me this thing, so therefore I must be worth this. And I'm not worth this, even though in my mind's eye, I believe I'm worth this. But when I walk into a place, whether it's a building with a store manager or someone else or, or some, some, some place that I'm walking into a group of people, the label is put on me because what I've allowed to come into my life and the price tag that has been put on me by my circumstance or my past. But God is going to break, he's breaking you out. He's breaking you out, and he has forgotten those things that are behind you, and he's looking forward to the things that he's created you to do. The com and I'm not saying that you're a commodity, but you're God's creation, and there is no price tag on Lillian. Amen? You, you might have been put up and placed on some type of shelf in life, but from this day forward... The pricelessness of the princes of the Lord has no value because nobody can afford this woman. Now, I, I hope I just took somebody somewhere. Now, 
I'll, you know, and I know this is a little long, but just bear with me. God is birthing something in you because you know what you've seen. The tangibility of the anointing of God's presence in this ministry has left you not wondering if God is out there, but wondering what God's going to do with you. You understand what I'm saying? And hang in there with me just for another minute. Whenever I, whenever I got married to my wife, God bless her soul, 15 years next month, amen? And we had our first child. And, and it just reminded me, as Susan was saying, the, the water was broken, and then it's delivering time. Something that has been distorted in our world today is the deliverance process. The process that is totally emotional, and it's birthed out of emotion. If you don't believe me, those of you that are men that's been in the waiting room and then also into the delivery room with your wife, the birthing process is totally emotional. There's nothing practical about it. I mean, I know it's practical probably for the doctor, but for me it was totally impractical. <laughs> Here she was on a table screaming in pain and gripping my hand so bad that I probably needed a doctor afterwards because of the broken phalanges that I had. But through that, I was just wanting to scream out, God, doctor, stop. Ease her pain. Don't do that. Don't push there. And when he got out this big, long, gigantic needle and said, we've got to numb this area to get, to get this situated and to get, the, get, it, uh, 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 get it a little bit ready, more ready for the baby, I saw that needle and I just was freaked out because whether I wanted to believe it or not, deliverance or delivering that child was going to happen because that was God's purpose for that time. And in that, I was able to celebrate that delivery process, that miracle, that deliverance with, with the one that I love. Maybe in the past, you haven't been able to celebrate the deliverance of the things in your mind's eye. But from this day forward, you have the hope of your salvation who is birthing in you things in your mind's eye that haven't even come forward on intangible lines on a piece of paper yet. You haven't walked into the building and asked for the job yet. You haven't, you haven't seen the favor of the Lord and your supervisor while you're working there. You haven't seen the promotability of the, of the gifts of God that's in you quite yet. But God is birthing something in you. And I want you to know this, that it takes practicality because after the, after the emotional birth of the baby, after the deliverance of all the hype, there became the practicality of caring for that which God has given me responsibility for. Here's where I'm going with this. <laughs> Timothy was a young pastor man, basically just a young man that got a hold of the gospel and wanted to preach it to the, to the ends of the earth. But he had a physical mentor. And I want to challenge you to get a physical mentor. Physically, some woman that can speak into your life and grab you by the nap of the neck and say, girlfriend, I know what you want to do, but that's not the right thing because let me tell you this. And to put you under that authority is God's way of elevating you in the spiritual realm of practical worship with him every single day. And Timothy put himself underneath the apostle Paul. And the apostle Paul said this to him, and this is where you are fixing to leave here. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 13. While evil men and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived, but as for you, continue in what you have learned. You've learned some, some stuff at Jacob's well. Continue in what you have learned and have, been, and have, and have become conceived of, not conceived from a birth of a baby out of a womb, but from your salvation experience here at, at, at Jacob's will, the renewing of your life, the testifying of your faith, because you know those from who you have learned it. You've seen us. You've seen the tangibility of the practice of the presence of God in your, in, in your life and what that can reveal. All Scripture is God-breathed and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God and in this case, the woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God wants to thoroughly equip you with these words. Fear not, for I am with you. Do you know how many times fear not is mentioned in the Bible? 
365 times. So you can go into every day from now on, waking up, putting your feet planted on the ground, and standing up and saying, though I know that, a, that, that the enemy is out there somewhere, I'm going to fear not today because this is my day. And I want you to go forward from here knowing that God has positioned you, has redeemed you, has loved you, and has put inside of you the Spirit of God to whom nobody and nothing can raise against. But I'm asking you to continue to press in and to fear not and to be submitted to a spiritual authority that will take you from right here unto evermore. Amen. God bless you. I love you so much. Y'all give Lillian a round of applause. Congratulations. Here is your reward. Here is your certificate. And here is your mic. God bless you, Lillian. Thank you. I made it. I just want to give God all the honor and all the glory. Um, I want to thank Jacob Well for allowing me to be here because it could have been somebody else. I could have been laying sleeping in my grave. And um, I just want to thank Miss Susan and Miss Josette, Pastor Charlie, Miss Pam, Brother Asa, Miss uh, Mandy. I want to thank all the staff for just being there for me, even when I wasn't even lovable. Um, I just, I just, I had a lot of fear in me of going home. I really did because I, I, I don't know what to, to expect when I get there, but I just prayed about it and God told me he got me. He got me. I'm just going to step out on faith and trust him and get my feet wet, you know. Um, for the ladies, I just want to thank y'all for encouraging me, and I just pray that I was an encouragement to y'all. Um, I'm nervous. I love y'all so much, and it's so hard. It's so hard because we done been through a lot together. Santana, I'm going to miss you. As for my family, I just thank y'all so much for just being there for me. Dennis, I love you so much. Mama, I just love you so much because you raised your kids and then you raised mine. <laughs> It's just so hard for you. And I just pray, pray a prayer blessing over you, Mama. Because you done, you done been through so much with your children and my children. And I love you so much. And I was reading up in Second Corinthians 7-9. But we have this... Um, treasure in jars of clay to show that to show that this this all surpassing power is from God and not from us we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed perplexed but not despaired prosecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed Say not rebuke in the name of Jesus because you can't have me. You can't have me. I'm a I'm a child of the king. And uh first John, you dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. I'm not worried about what the world say about me or think about me no more, because I'm walking with God. He had, he had positioned me in a place and amongst people that who loves me and that, that really cared for me. So I'm just, I'm just stay positioned for him and wait on him. And for the new ladies, it's hard. It is. It's hard. Change is hard. But you just got to keep pressing in. Don't be afraid to get your feet wet. 
Because whatever God has for you, he got it for you. And I had a song I wanted to sing to y'all, if you don't mind. Don't you move my mountain, but give me the strength to climb. And please don't you move my stumbling block, but lead me around him. Oh, Lord, don't move my mountain, but give me the strength to climb. And please don't you take away my stumbling block, but lead me all around. Oh, Jesus, I don't bother nobody. I try to treat everybody the same. But every time I turn my back, uh, they go scandalizing my name. Oh, Jesus, don't you move my mountain, but give me the strength to climb. And please don't you take away my stumbling blocks, but lead me all around. Oh, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm, I'm confused, Susan. Because that's the first time I've ever heard her sing. Huh? That was awesome. That was awesome. You keep that, that, that lamp out from under that bushel, okay? You keep that lamp out from under that bushel. Um, Pastor Curtis, Pastor Reggie, we're... We're honored to have you here today. And uh, brother, yesterday, uh, I already knew it in my heart, but, I, but it was confirmed yesterday. I, I'd just like to get off somewhere and just sit and listen to you preach for about 24 hours sometime. You, you have a, a wonderful gift, brother. And I, and I love your fellowship. And I, oh, and I, uh, I am. I am on. Can y'all, am I not on the microphone? I don't know what to you. But I got another microphone. <laughs> Hello. I love the fellowship with you guys, and I appreciate it. Um, we were in a, in a little family meeting a couple of days ago, and someone, some lady in the program said, I need to know more about faith. And when she said that, God said, I'm talking to you. And so I, I went home and, and gave prayerful consideration to the fact that God wanted me to just spend a few minutes on faith this morning. And so I want to start by reading you a scripture. And this scripture is in Mark 9, starting in verse 14. It says this. When Jesus, Peter, James, and John came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, Jesus asked. And a man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. And he foams at the mouth, and he gnashes his teeth, and he becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. And Jesus said, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I stay with you? How shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him to him, and when the Spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion, and he fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or the water to kill him. But if you can do anything, 
take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, but help my unbelief. That's a struggle we all stay in. We believe, but we're troubled and conflicted by the unbelief as well. And so we waver back and forth in our walk and our commitment with God because we're swinging between belief and unbelief. And I want to tell you something. Unbelief is the enemy of faith. That's what it is. It's the unbelief is the enemy of faith. So what I want to talk about for a minute this morning is what is true faith? Why is faith important? Where does it come from? How do you increase it? And what are the benefits of having it? And the question is, have you really got it? What is true faith? Well, let's look at this first. Here's Webster's definition of belief. Now, y'all listen to this. To have confidence in the truth, the existence or reliability of something, although without absolute proof, that what you're doing is right. You, you believe that it's true. You think it exists. You think it's reliable, but you're a little bit not sure about whether you're really right or not. That's belief. Webster's definition of faith. Belief that is not based on proof. You ain't got to have no proof. You believe it in faith. Now, what's God's definition of faith? God's definition of faith is in Hebrews 11 and 1. It says this, Now, faith is being sure of what you hope for, but certain of what you do not see. Now, we're all sure of what we hope for. Now, we all know what we hope for. But I remember the time when I had already been in the ministry, and I was already ordained as a pastor. And God came to me one day. as He, he was ready to position me differently in the kingdom. He was ready to promote me in the kingdom. And he came and he said, Brother Charlie... I can't do what I want to do with your life because you only got half of faith, brother. I said, what you talking about? He said, you know what you're hoping for, but you ain't sure I can do any of it for you. You know what you hope for, but you don't know that I can deliver it for you. And it rocked my world. And I began to understand the power of faith. Why is faith so important? Hebrews 11:6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. You don't have faith, you can't please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Where does faith come from? Faith says that consequently, it comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the Word of Christ. Why is that important to you and I? If it's true that faith comes by hearing the message and the message is heard in the word of Christ, then I want to challenge you with something about the importance of regular Bible reading and Bible study Amen. and bringing your word out and beginning to pray over it before you start to read and say, God, reveal yourself to me in this word today. Touch my heart with what I read on these pages so that he can speak to your heart the things that man could never say to you. Get in that regular Bible study and that Bible reading with consistency and get yourself in a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church where the Word of God is preached by a pastor fearlessly without any fear of political correctness. When you leave here, ladies, go find you a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church to worship in. Not to have church in, to worship in. And make sure that the pastor is preaching the Word of God fearlessly. And that he withholds nothing that God has placed in his heart. Because there's somebody out there that's living in sin. He don't want to embarrass. Or he don't want to grab a tithe and run out the front door with it. Because he talked about them living together not being married. Or he talked about them being in a homosexual relationship. Or he talked about fornication. Y'all, don't, don't, don't go to church with a lay back on that stuff. Where it's all warm and fuzzy. A warm and fuzzy church... It's not going to do you any good. How to increase your faith. Oh, y'all, God showed me this. That would just tickle me to death. I'm going to read you three scriptures that are the key to it. Joshua 24 and 31. 
Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him, who had experienced, everybody say experienced, experienced. who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. Judges 3, verse 1. These are the nations the Lord left to test all those Israelites who had not, what, experienced any of the wars in Canaan. He did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not in, had any previous battle experience. Samuel, 2 Samuel 17 and 8. When Absalom was pursuing King David and wanted to kill him, he was given this warning. It says, you know your father, he's talking about King David, you know your father and his men, they're fighters, and as fierce as a wild bear robbed of her cubs. Besides, your father is what? An experienced fighter. An experienced fighter. God's always looking for men and women who not only have faith, but who have experienced him inside their faith. It's one thing to read about God. It's something else to hear somebody talk about God. It's something else to believe in God. It's something else to believe God. But the power is in having faith in God through the experience you have had with Him. Amen. What qualifies me to stand before God behind this pulpit is not that I'm theologically trained, not that I've been to seminary. It's not about my ordination. It's the fact that I have experienced Jesus Christ in my life. He's the one who delivered me from depravity and perversion and sickness and darkness in my life. He's the one that, re that redeemed my marriage. He's the one that redeemed my family. He's the one that allowed me to be with my grandchildren, which would never have happened without him. I've experienced him. I've experienced the truth of his word. I've been in it. I've read it. I've studied it. I have faith in it. And I know that it works. And it sure works better than the advice of men, which I took for most of my life. It, 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 faith is just, it's not based on how smart you are. It's based on how much experience you've had with God. Now, I, I just want to do something for, with you. I want you to help me just a minute, okay? Come here. I want you to walk over here with me to this switches on this wall over here. You see those two switches up on the top right there? What do you believe is going to happen if I ask you to flip those switches down? Is that what you believe? Why don't you just try it and see? What, what do you believe is going to happen if you put, push them back up? Try it. Why do you believe that? And haven't you experienced your entire life that if you flip the switch down, the light goes out? And if you flip the light up... It, it comes back on. You've experienced that. So you, have, you didn't have any trouble doing that because you know exactly what's going to happen because you've experienced it, right? Now, would you take just a minute and explain to everybody here the, 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 uh, the mechanical principles that allow that to happen? The yeah, like, like <laughs> explain to them the, the science behind hydroelectricity and how they build the dams and put the generators in the dams and spin them around and it causes the line and you have the, all the principles that go through the wires that bring the electric. Can you explain all that? Well, then what are you doing flipping the switch? Because you see, you don't have to know everything about God. You just have to start to experience Him. You understand what I'm saying? It's no different. Just continue to experience Him through the power of the experience. Your faith will become stronger and stronger and stronger. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that. Amen. Oh, uh, we got to have some experience up in this place. The benefits of having faith in your life. Here's just, here's just a few. Isaiah 7. If you don't stand firm in the faith, you're not going to stand at all. Matthew 9. Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. Matthew 9, he, uh, Jesus told these two blind beggars that cried out for healing, according to your faith, it's going to be done for you, and their sight was restored. Good stuff. John 14, anyone who has faith in him will do what he has been doing and will do even greater things. You know, Christ said that, though, if you've got faith in me, you're going to do greater things than I've been able to do. 
because I'm going home to the Father, and I'm sending the Holy Spirit down to you to guide you and train you and teach you and place inside you the power of your anointings and equippings and giftings that I've given you to create my purpose here on earth. And you're going to be able to do miraculous works through the power of the Holy Spirit, not by your own flesh. Because anything you try to do in the kingdom of God in your own flesh will be an ordinary work. But if you do it in the power of the Holy Spirit, it will be miraculous. And the reason he's going to make it miraculous is so that Christ can receive the glory for it. That's what he's going to do. Here we go. Acts 3.16. After seeing the crippled man at the gate beautiful of the temple miraculously healed, uh, Apostle Peter said to the crowd, By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is, G it is by Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him. See, we want to give men credit for things. And the crowd surrounded Peter and John. Man, y'all y'all special, man. Y'all must be terrific. Y'all must really have something on you to be healed. And he said, why me? Why me? It was the power of the Holy Spirit in me that allowed it to happen. Matthew 17, I tell you the truth. If you have the faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move this mountain. From here to there it will move and nothing. Y'all, this is powerful. Nothing will be impossible for you. Do you know I've come to believe that in my life? Nothing that God calls me to do will be impossible for me. He will not send me to do anything. He will not equip me to do and provide for me to do. And he's not doing it because he loves Pastor Charlie Haynes. He's the same thing is ready and waiting for you. If you are faithful to him, if you trust him, if you listen to his voice through the power of the Holy Spirit, he will use you in ways that will make you shake your own head, much less what other people shake. You understand what I'm saying? faith I learned something while I was doing this because I've often said from this pulpit brother Curtis I've said I don't just believe in God I believe God and it's true but there's something deeper than that I don't just believe in God I believe God but more than that I have faith in him through experience you see that's bigger than all of that put together that's why I don't have to bat my eyes or drop my head or look the other way when I talk to you about Christ because I've experienced Him. And not only have I experienced Him, not only has my family experienced Him, but He has blessed us for 16 years to be involved in the ministry at Righteous Oaks Recovery Center for Men and here at Jacob's Well to watch Him 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year working His, His mercy right here. And we get to see it. The ladies of Jacob 12. I don't have to look down when I tell you that if you complete this program that your life will change because I can point out hundreds and hundreds of women that it's happened to. I don't have to worry about the struggle you're in trying to get to the end of it because I've watched others struggle. But I know that the power of Christ and faith in Him will deliver you through whatever the world tries to bring against you while you're here. It's a powerful thing. So we're going to end with this. Do you really have faith in it at all? Oh, I got, I got faith, Brother Charlie. What good is it, my brothers and my sisters, if you claim to have faith, but you ain't got nothing to go with it? What good is that? What good is it to call yourself a Christian if you're not going to walk out a Christian life? What good is it to read his word if you're only going to pick out the selected passages that are comfortable for you? What good is it if a man or woman claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food, and if one of you says, well, go, I wish you well. Keep warm, keep fed, hope everything works out for you. Spirit.